Hey guys, this is Alan, and in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you all the tools you need in order to successfully grow your own moringa tree, also known as drumstick, miracle tree, tree of life, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna give you everything you need to know in order to successfully grow it. And also, I'm gonna give you the secret sauce that I figured out over the years growing this plant, which nobody else knows about. I will tell you that under my personal tips towards the end of the video. And also, if you wanna propagate this tree, I'm gonna have a small section towards the end, how to propagate this tree successfully. Anyways, stick to the end. Moringa tree, if you never heard of this tree before, well, that's okay because you are probably just starting gardening. But moringa tree should be one of the first trees that you plant in the ground. And the reason why is because it's a fast growing tree that takes a full sun and once established in the ground, it will also take the winter, depending on how cold you get in your area. What makes this tree special? Well, the, tr the tree behind me, every part of it, it's edible. You can eat the leaves, you can eat the bark, you can eat the root system and when it flowers you can eat the seed pods and the flowers as well everything on this tree is edible also a lot of people like this plant specifically because it has a lot of medicinal value to it i'm not really into the health aspect of it i just like the tree so if you want to know exactly what it does to your body well you can do some research online but anyways now that you know a little bit about the moringa tree. Let's get to the growing tips. Sun requirement. Moringa tree needs full sun. It will take full sun anywhere in the United States. Here in my area, we get super hot in the summer and the sun is no issue for this plant. Can you grow in the shade? Yes, you can, but usually what happens in the shade is your tree will actually grow very leggy, very like tall and skinny trying to reach the sun. If you don't want that, well, give it some direct sunlight. Now, if your tree will eventually reach the sun, that is okay. But as long as you don't have it in full darkness, you should be fine. Remember, full sun. Winter protection. This tree in my area is frost sensitive. Every winter, this tree here will take frost damage. Whatever the ice touches will die, and that's fine. No issues there. Now, you have to understand, your tree will take the winter, it will take the frost. The coldest temperature I've seen this tree take is in the high teens. But that is a tree that is fully rooted in the ground, like this one right here. This one right here has been in the ground for about a year and a half, uh, two years maybe. I don't remember, I lost count. But it's been in the ground for a little bit. And uh, in the winter time, even if the entire canopy dies off, it will come back from the root system, no issues. Now this tree should be a lot bigger. Right now it's about 15 feet tall, but it's in my horse area and the horses love it. It's really good for them. And what they like to do is they like to chew the branches and eat everything. So it took a little longer for this tree to take off simply because my horses were eating it. Now, if your tree is small and you just put it in the ground and it takes frost damage and it doesn't have a root system in the ground, then your tree will die to the ground and not come back. So keep that in mind if you are planting late in the season. I do not recommend planting this tree late. I recommend planting it early. That way your tree has plenty of time to grow roots in the ground. If your ground freezes in your area because you get that cold, well, this tree will probably not make it in your area. Remember high teens briefly. That's all I've seen this tree take. Frost, whatever frost touches, it will damage your tree but it will come back. Anyways, let's talk about the growth structure. This tree naturally will grow upright with a smaller canopy on the top. And what most people like to do is you let it grow for a year to two years. Then what you do early in the season, before it starts growing vigorously, what you do is you pick the height where you want your canopy to start and then you chop it. Don't be afraid of it, just go ahead and cut it. What that's gonna do is, that's where your canopy is going to start. Most people usually cut it at about seven to eight feet tall, and then that will give you that round, nice canopy that people like. If you don't cut it, I will show you in a minute, your tree will grow upright with a smaller canopy on the top. 
It will make it harder for you to reach the seed pods, the leaves, and everything else. So you want your tree to branch out. So my recommendation, again, is to prune it as your tree gets older. This tree is also a fast-growing tree. Once you put it in the ground, in a single year, your tree can easily reach eight feet plus. In a single year. And I'm talking about from seed. So yes, your tree will grow very fast. Let's talk about the root system. The root system of your mar moringa tree, it's a taproot. What happens is it has like a very thick or two roots that go straight down in the ground. The older the tree gets, the deeper the root system goes in the ground. So it's actually um, safe to plant close to structures because the root system is not that invasive to the point where it's going to uplift anything. But you have to understand, the trunk of your tree, as it gets older, it's gonna get big. So make sure to give it at least a few feet away from any structures. So that way you have space for the trunk of your tree. Let's talk about pollination. This tree is self-pollinating. You only need one tree to actually pollinate itself and then this is what you're gonna get. They flower usually early summer and the seed pods, as you can see right here, they develop usually late summer, sometime in the fall, depending on your temperatures. Everything in here, it's edible. And you can see the seeds on the inside. If you want to purchase seeds, fresh seeds, you can get them from our website. Link in the description. Let's talk about water in your tree. There are two ways you are going to water your moringa tree. If your moringa tree is in a container, you're gonna follow our 50% rule. If you wanna learn more about the 50% rule, check the link in the description for more details. But just to give you a quick summary, you wait until 50% of your container is dry, and that is exactly how often you are going to water your moringa tree. Now, if your tree is in the ground, the first six months in the ground, you are going to follow the finger method. That is, you stick your finger in the dirt all the way down and then the minute that you no longer feel moisture on the tip of your finger, however long it took to go from wet to that point, that's exactly how often you are going to water your new moringa tree in the ground the first six months. After six months time, you need to deep water. So when you deep water, you wanna water and make sure the water goes down in the soil at least three to five feet, minimum the first year or the second year. And then you wait until a few feet are dry and then you water again. So you technically are not gonna have to water very often. Once you start deep watering, but when you do water, it's gonna take you a few hours, depending on how fast your soil drains the water. Let's talk about fertilization. To be honest, guys, I don't do anything and moringa tree grows just fine. I don't do anything in containers. I don't do anything in the ground. So to be honest, you don't have to do anything either. You see the soil my moringa tree is growing in? Let me show you. This is clay soil. You see how dry that is? A lot of people will tell you nothing will grow in the soil. My moringa tree is growing in there. I got my lemon tree growing over there. And behind all this mess right here, I have an ice cream bean uh, tree growing in there. And back over there against the wall, I have my giant passion fruit growing in this soil. So, yes. Everything will grow, guys. The soil is irrelevant for moringa trees. So do not worry about the soil. If you wanna put some organic material on the ground, it will always help the plant, so it's never gonna hurt it. So, you know, just whatever you got, just throw it in the ground. But just to keep it simple, you don't need anything special. Container growing. Can you grow your moringa tree in a container? Temporarily, yes. Every year we, we start our moringa trees from seed in containers like this. Like I said earlier, if you have put this plant in the ground early in the season, this tree right here would have been about 8 to 10 feet tall by now. They grow that quickly. Now that is in the ground guys, not in the containers. In the containers, once your moringa trees reach the bottom of the container, they get stunted. They don't like to, to grow as fast as they would if they were in the ground. 
So my recommendation for you is, yes, you can go ahead and keep it in the container for a little while, but it will not grow as fast as it will in the ground. Now, can you keep your moringa tree indefinitely in the container? The answer is no. And the reason why is because of the root system of this plant. Remember it has a top root system that goes straight down in the ground? Well, usually if you wanna keep your plants in containers, there are two options you can, you can do. The first one is your root prune. So every year you take your plant out of the container, then you prune the root system, and then you repot it into the same container. So that way you don't have to put it in a bigger container. The option is not viable for moringa trees simply because when you start cutting that tap root, you will kill your plant. Option number two is a pot in your plant. You take this plant and then you put it in a bigger container. If you're gonna keep your moringa trees in containers, do not go wider. You wanna go deeper because the roots go down. They don't go sideways. So most times, even if you see a moringa tree, a big moringa tree in a container, and you check the sides, you will not see hardly any roots on the sides. Most of the roots are gonna be down in the bottom. And that's probably what's going on in here. You see, most of the roots are on the bottom and hardly any roots on the sides. This plant has been root bound, stunted in this container for at least six months. It needs to go in a longer container. But here at the nursery, we do not do that, guys. What we do is we try to push them out so that way we don't have to up pot them because they grow so fast that up potting them, it just doesn't work. Because within a matter of months, if you put it in a longer container, this plant will root that new container all the way down to the bottom. And then what do you do? Keep going longer? It's just not going to work. So remember, if you want to keep it in a container, yes, you can keep it in a container for a little bit. Um, but indefinitely, I don't recommend it. And when they are in the container, they never grow fast or huge. The only time I've seen moringa trees, big moringa trees in containers is because they rooted through the container into the ground and then they were able to grow. So if you're buying a moringa tree, always go the smallest because it's just not worth it to buy a bigger one because they grow so fast. And that brings us to my personal growing tips. What I'm about to tell you guys, it took me some learning. It took me a few years and it doesn't just apply to moringa trees. It applies to a lot of plants here at the nursery, but I figured it out. And it's not any, you don't have to buy anything. No fertilizers here, no sprays here. The secret to growing moringa tree is the night temperatures. The hotter the night temperatures, guys, the faster your moringa tree will grow. If you try growing moringa tree before, from seed or cuttings, or you put it in the ground or you got it in a container and then your tree died. The reason it died was because you planted it at the wrong time of the year. Remember, if your tree takes frost damage, it will die, and if it has no roots in the ground, it will not come back. The hotter it gets at night, the faster your moringa tree will grow. It's that simple. So the best time to plant moringa tree, it's always going to be when the night temperatures, in my opinion, are at least minimum 50 degrees consistently every single night, night. I'm not talking about day temperatures here. And expected to rise in the next month or so. And that for most places, it's going to be sometime late spring. In my area, that is gonna be late March. Planting them early, it's not gonna give you a head start. Your moringa tree is actually just gonna sit in the ground until the night temperatures warm up and then it's going to take off. And that is a secret sauce to growing moringa trees. If you failed growing moringa tree before, this is why. Any other personal growing tips? If you're gonna water your moringa tree in, in containers, what I've noticed personally, especially when your plants don't have bark like this, if you water from the top and then you let the, uh, the water pull on the surface over here around the trunk and your trunk doesn't have any bark, what I've noticed is right at the base of the container, all the way down here where the trunk meets the uh, potting mix, it will rot very easily. 
So if you have seedlings like this, and then they keep dying, they keep breaking at the base, the base will turn yellow and then they, they will like shrivel up and then they will break off. It's because when you water, you're letting the water pool around the trunk and then that will cause trunk rot. I only noticed this in containers, smaller plants like this. Once your plant gets older, and it actually gets bark on the stem, that is not an issue anymore. So if you have plants this size, I recommend you to water from the bottom. Just get a bucket of water, sit it on the bucket of water like that and let it soak up from the bottom instead of watering from the top because that will save your plant over time, especially if you're having issues with trunk rot. So that's it guys. Very simple, right? Growing moringa does not require any special skills. The only thing you need to know is the night temperatures. When it's hot at night, it's moringa season. And it will grow super fast. If all you wanted to know was how to take care of your moringa tree, well, we're done. But now, what we're gonna do is, I also wanna show you how to, we propagate our mor moringa trees. So, let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, the first requirement is you need potting mix. What potting mix do you use? To be honest, it doesn't matter. As long as it drains the water, you are good to go. But remember, it needs to drain the water. If you wanna learn more about potting mixes, I got another video where I explain in details what to look for in a good potting mix. And it's really not the ingredients in the potting mix, it's all about how fast it drains the water. Now this potting mix right here is what we use on everything here, 100% of the plants at the nursery. House plants, tropical plants, citrus, everything gets this potting mix, even house plants. So, what you do is you get a container. It doesn't have to be big. You can go smaller than this. But this is what I use right here. This is four inches uh, from side to side, and then it's about uh, six inches long. This is what I have right now, so this is what I'm gonna show you. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna get your potting mix, you're gonna fill it all the way to the top, just like this. Then you're gonna compact it down Always compact it down so it doesn't settle down on you. Just like that. And then you're gonna get your seeds. Do the seeds have to be fresh? Fortunately, they don't. These seeds right here, as long as they don't get wet, they will last for years. So all you gotta do is get your seed and stick it right in the middle. Germination rate for moringa seeds it's literally almost 100%. So I recommend to put only one seed per container because most likely it will grow. Once you have your seed in the middle, then get a little bit of potting mix and then cover it up, just like that. You're done. It's that simple. The key to propagation though is the night temperatures. What temperature are we looking for at night for propagating moringa tree? The hotter the better. 80 degrees, 90 degrees at night, these plants grow like a weed. Median rate growth, usually you're gonna get it around 60, 70 degrees. So it all depends on the night temperatures. If it's really hot at night, and I'm doing this in the middle of July, within week to week and a half, moringa trees will start sprouting. That's how fast they sprout. And within a month, they will look just like the other moringa trees that I showed you. And that is how you propagate your moringa trees. Can you do it indoors? Yes, you can do it indoors, but you remember, you need to hot temperatures. So I highly recommend to put a heat mat on the bottom if you're gonna do it indoors. But once your seedlings come up, like this one right here, and it's cold, and you water from the top and you let the water pull around the trunk, this will rot very easily. So if you're gonna do it indoors, you gotta be extremely careful to keep the base of the trunk dry. So if watering indoors, make sure you water from the bottom because you will get trunk rot very easily and then you will fail. So it's always best just to wait until it's actually hot at night, and then propagate your moringa seeds. If you're gonna do it indoors, thinking you're gonna get a head start, to be honest, it, it's just not worth it. Um, it's just best just to wait for hot temperatures at night, and then go ahead and propagate your moringa trees. 
And that's it, guys. It's that simple. And that's how we do all the moringa uh, trees that uh, we s sell here at the nursery. Simple, right? It took me a while to figure that out, but I figured it out. So, growing moringa tree, all you need is just heat. The hotter it gets, the more successful you are going to be. Anyways, if this helped you out, guys, as always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and if you have any other questions, as always, comment below, and I will see you next time.